I want to develop a web app, progressive web app, which shows and updates entries in a MySQL database and allows entries to be made. Do your web courses elaborate, elaborate on progressive web apps? Uh, no, not progressive, but it does teach you how to interact with the database with PHP and SQL. You do the CRUD operations. I also teach responsive design as well. So it'll take you like nine tenths of the way there. And once you've done my courses, to, to go, to go uh, PWA wouldn't be a big deal. All right. What's your thoughts about Amazon Web Services? Do you think investing time learning, learning that cloud will help web dev career? Only if you're doing Amazon Web Services. As far as I understand, it's much more suitable AWS for very large organizations, although things may have changed since then. Um, you could do with AWS, you could do with another, another provider. There's several out there. AWS has, happens to be the biggest, but again, I'm under the impression at this point in time, haven't looked at it in a while, that you, it's something more suitable for a larger organization. So if you plan on working for larger organizations, that might be something to look at. But again, when it comes to learning all the stuff, there's so much out there. If you, tr if you spend all your time trying to chase after learning this and learning that and learning this, you'll never actually get any work done. You get your foundations, you learn one framework maybe, for app development, and then you just jump into the game and you learn everything else on a need to nerd basis. That's a great thing. Once you've gotten through your foundations and your basics and you establish yourself, you'll get paid to learn. Fantastic. Data visualization expert and hardcore program would, and hard, let me say that again. Data visualization expert and hardcore programmer would love to hear your view on what the future holds for each. If possible, which would you recommend? Well, if you get into data visualization, you're probably going to have to have some sort of technical background degree beyond software development to get into those fields. I may be wrong in certain circumstances, but I think that is the case. In terms of a hardcore programmer, that's much more open. Again, I've talked about this. If you're doing freelance, you don't need any degrees or... Uh, yeah, you don't need any degrees, but if you're going to go work for larger companies, they're going to want degrees that are related to the subject at hand. And I would imagine the same thing with data visualization. Personally, I don't know what your background is. I don't know what kind of degree, what your background is, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't have a degree, you don't have a background, go to programming. What are the best website sources for of ideas for first-time beginner projects in Python? Well, if you've done my beginner's course, you know you've done some mini projects there. And then in the section in my course on uh, careers, I give you all kinds of options. I give you uh, some good books, some good resources, some sites. And on YouTube, there are good tutorials on how to set up Django in 20 steps. You know, once you've done the foundation, that's what's lacking out there in the code training world online is good fundamental training. But once you've got that, then you can just, you can use the lousiest tutorials and you, they'll make sense to you. Next question. What are some of the best books to learn CS from, computer science from? Uh, go to Amazon, check out the reviews. I suggest starting with my course because I teach those fundamental concepts and then everything else become easy. What are your thoughts on GraphQL? Well, use it when it makes sense. I haven't used it, so I don't have much more than that to say about it. What is the best room temperature for programming? Thank you. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. Cooler rooms, though, allow the computers to run faster, but ultimately you should be comfortable. Have you ever been to a non-speaking, uh, non-English speaking countries for business or traveling? Yes, I've been to several in South America, Asia, um, Europe. I will have to leave that to another vlog. Uh, what is the fastest way to become a web dev? Not so, f not so full fledged, but enough to get a small job and money. Fast way to become a web dev. And I'm going to shamelessly, shamelessly self promote. Learn the foundations. My course does that, my courses do that. Build some little mini projects, which I do provide, and then get out there and get some real projects. Consider them freelance work, whether it be on a freelance site, or you do stuff for super cheap, or you talk to local friends or local businesses, and you do one or two jobs for free. That's how you start. You gotta get a portfolio out there, you gotta get a little bit of experience with real projects. And then uh, Bob's your uncle. You're gonna start making money. There's no question. Next question. Is it worth Firebase a medium large app web app instead of coding the back end from scratch? The project complexity is requiring too much time for me to develop it, although Firebase seems good, fast friendly, and can also charge back some money in the future. 
Yeah, that's the first thing I always say to people. When you look at a project, first thing you do when you have a project handed to you is you, you say, okay, what else is out there? What else is out there? What could I leverage? Whether it be a framework, whether it be an open source app that you could leverage and build off of. That's what smart developers do. Building from scratch is the last thing you do. It's the last thing you do. Last thing you do. When I was first building Studio Web, the first thing I did is I looked around all kinds of learning management systems to see what was out there, see what they could do. And nothing was close to um, being able to provide what I needed in terms of what I wanted Studio Web to do in the end. So I had to build from scratch. But generally speaking, yeah, if Firebase can provide the tools you need to supercharge or speed up the whole development process, how to get started in a job to program code robotics with a laptop? And what companies do you do offer these positions? Well, look it up on Indeed.com, other job sites. Programming robotics, you're probably going to be looking at C, C++, or Python. Start with any programming language. The easiest would be Python, of course, and then you can move into C++ if need be. But learn Python, then a couple of tutorials on robotics, and start finding, looking for uh, companies that need that kind of a developer. I'm amongst the first comments. I have no idea what to ask. So how are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. We're, we're going to get Studio Web 4, Studio Web 4 out the door. It's so close. You know, that's the thing with software development. The last 5% can take, a, it's like pulling teeth to get all these little niggles, little, little bugs out of your software. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. That's where I stand around with my, I have a nerd whipping stick. And uh, I whip them, bang, bang, gotta fix this, bang, gotta fix that, you gotta fix this. Not literally, I'm joking. But yeah, you know, busy, busy with stuff, so it's kind of cool. This time of year too, uh, late August, early September, schools are coming back online, so I'm working with my schools. Should I invest in expensive computer or do most web development jobs give you a desktop? A lot of jobs will give you a desktop or a laptop, that's for sure. I think the majority, it's just a, you know, it's not, you don't need much of a computer to write code these days, you know. A four or five year old laptop will probably do the job more than easily. Where could I apply vanilla JavaScript skills? Let's say I have a solid fundamental knowledge about the language itself, but little to none in the framework department. No jQuery, React, no Vue, no Ember, and pure, pure JS, ES3, ES6, 7, and some HTML5. How much of a drawback is that I can't cover the framework's requirements. Yeah, that's the thing, when you go looking for jobs, they're gonna list a huge amount of requirements which you're gonna require. Uh, what I would do is I would look around, see where the general demand is in your area. So if you find in your area it's view, then just do some basic view work and then go do some stage work, do a freelance, uh, a couple of freelance jobs for free if you have to and uh, just, Build up a bit of a portfolio so you can show per prospective employers, this is what I've done. People like developers who learn on their own, take initiative. So first thing you do, choose a framework that you want to learn. Vue, React, depending. See where the jobs are in your area. Make sure you have all the other requirements as well. So if you don't have a computer science degree and you find jobs where they want a com computer science degree and Vue.js or and React.js, you're not going to get the job learning Vue. Another thing you can do is go freelance, start building real things. And again, one thing I want to stress, this is the last question. Woohoo! Last question. When it comes to professional web development, it's a continuous process of learning, especially the first three years. That's why the quickest way, that's why rather the quickest way to become a professional developer and to accumulate, to start making a lot of money is to A, learn your fundamentals well, B, do some mini projects, C, do some mini project, tutorial projects, mini, don't be no big ones. Because if you build a project like this, if you build a shopping cart this way, and then you go see a client, you probably, you might have to, you probably have to build a shopping cart in a very different way. Every project's different. So that's why software developers have to have that gr good grasp of the foundations and the fundamentals and the ability to learn on a need to nerd basis. That's so important, especially the first three years or so, you're learning a lot. And over time, the amount of time you spend learning versus writing code, et cetera, diminishes. But yeah, first few years of development, you're learning a lot. That's just normal. Don't worry about it. All right. That's it for Q&A with Steph. I got to go drink some water.